welcome back. Um, I have a quick one for you. Let's say you are working in the prototyping department of a large company and you have to make prototype parts of sheet metal parts. For example, stamped parts or uh, die cut parts or whatever. And you have to do prototype parts by, for example, CNC milling or send them out to be laser cut or you have water jet in-house or to the wire EDM or whatever. But the material you have is too thick. You have not the right material uh, thickness-wise or your laser cutting guy has not the right material there. You can either order material or you can use what you have on hand and machine it down. You can surface grind sheet metal down. It's, uh, <laughs> it's a bit painful. My foreman actually showed me a better way to do it. A few years ago he showed me the, this technique and it, it works brilliantly. Um, I have a piece of this is one millimeter sheet metal and it's milled down here to about 0.5 millimeter thickness. And you can imagine work holding um, thin sheet metal for face milling is quite painful even if you have a good vac vacuum table to suck it down. It's still an annoying process. Um, he showed me a way better way to do it. Um, doesn't work with, with every shape of part or um, and it's a bit limited on size but can get you out of a pinch and I will show that to you. What you need is a milling machine obviously. Um, our large parallel that's higher than the jaws of your wise and a piece of sheet metal that you want to mill down in thickness. This is uh, one millimeter uh, mild steel sheet metal. And the trick we're going to use or the behavior of a milling cutter that we're going to use is that uh, in climb cutting the cutter wants to push the workpiece away from the cutter itself. So what we're going to do is we'll place our sheet metal backed up against the parallel here and clamp it. And you could not conventional mill this now to thickness. Um, it would crash horribly. But you can climb mill it without a problem. It will get pushed back against the parallel and that's perfectly fine. Well, let's, let's take a cut. Obviously, this being a climb cut, you have to be careful. Uh, there are limits. Um, this is a 10 millimeter six flute carbide M mill. And a uh, six fluter works very well for this because um, there's always a lot of, uh, of flutes engaged and they're not hammering. It's relatively smooth going and take like cuts and you climb mill it down until you have your thickness. There we go. We just reduced the thickness of this piece of sheet metal with a single pass. Um, it sh I, I took a cut of 0.2 millimeters and this should now be uh, roughly 0.8 millimeters. And the beauty of this technique is we can take this material out, measure its thickness and put it back in the wise and do not lose a lot of precision that way. Okay, another example. Let's say this is a finished part you get from the laser cutter prototype part and the design engineer decides in the last second that he doesn't want one millimeter sheet metal, he wants point, point 0.9 millimeter for a whole part, of course. <laughs> Not a problem. Just, just do it in two, two operations. Half of the part down and wise, half of the part sticking up. Take a cut on one side. I'm not measuring it now, it doesn't matter for the sake of a demonstration. And 
then you hold it, then you clamp it on the machined thickness, just as before. And you do the same thing. There you go. One piece of sheet metal milled down in thickness. Once we hit it with some scotch brite, it gets pretty darn good. And this is the original surface of the sheet metal. Stock surface, milled surface and hit with, with scotch brite. Um, I didn't measure the thickness, but I guess we're pretty close. It's also a good idea to take a spring pass, because even if you use a carbide end mill, the machine and the end mill will flex a little bit. So I hope you enjoyed this little technique. Um, this can get you out of a pinch in a lot of cases. Hope you enjoyed, thank you all for watching and see you next time.